This is a Simhanger review of the most recent edition of the Honeycomb Alpha Yoke. It's the Alpha Flight Controls XPC. XPC because it's compatible with both Xbox and PC. The product will arrive very well packed in typical Honeycomb fashion. In the box is everything that you need to get going, a dual option mounting plate, all the necessary cables, two solid metal desk clamps, and of course the obligatory instruction manual. And of course the Alpha Flight Controls XPC yoke. And because this review will cover both PC and Xbox, we'll also be looking at the hub. Warm well, welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. I'll be keeping the waffle to a minimum, but let's quickly cover off some basics. There's a center pin on the upper side of the mounting plate and a recess on the underside of the yoke housing to hold it in place. Two mounting options. You can use this sticky pad as an alternative to the clamps. They are solid metal and fairly weighty. And something I've been asked a number of times, I'll take this opportunity to answer it here. On the mounting plate, what are these two lugs used for? What purpose do they serve? Well, if you're using the sticky pad, it sits pretty flush to the desk. So raise these up so you can get your fingers underneath to lift it. My particular preference is to use the clamps. And fitting them is quick and easy. The hole on the end of the clamp simply fits over the lug on the mounting plate. To hold it true, the actual clamp itself has got quite a long reach and will fit most desks. Once you've opened the jaws, it's just a simple matter of sliding it into place, then simply tighten until it's held firm. These clamps hold very well, and once fixed correctly, well, you're not going to get any movement. Simple solution, but very effective. Let's now fit the yoke to the mount. Quick note, it has a yoke connector cable, which fits to the main housing on one side and the yoke on the other. We'll be fitting that shortly. Here's the recess to accommodate the mounting pin. The two wheels at the back of the yoke are tightened down once in place to provide tension between the mounting plate and the yoke itself. Put the yoke in place over the mounting pin and then push it back slightly and it will slip into a recess. Once that's in place, it's just a simple matter of tightening down the two wheels at the back onto the lugs on the mounting plate and your yoke is now fitted securely in place. It's not going anywhere. Let's now fit the yoke connector cable. You need this to make sure all your buttons and switches on the handles operate. One side in the yoke and one on the main housing of the yoke itself. And that's it, you're pretty much set up. There's a USB-C, two standard USB as the main connection to your PC or Xbox. On the back of the yoke, you have a switch to change between PC and Xbox mode. Next to that USB-C for the hub and another USB-C for main connection and an LED button to change the intensity of the light in the front panel. Let's take a quick look at the hub, which is a separate purchase and only required for Xbox. PC users don't need it. The hub allows connection to the Bravo throttle quadrant and upcoming Charlie rudder pedals. The hub has two standard USB connection ports for feed from the Bravo and Charlie and a USB-C port for connection to the yoke. This USB-C to USB-C cable is fairly short, but it's only got to go from the hub to the yoke. It's also compatible with the Logitech standard throttle quadrant and rudder pedals. Note it's not compatible with Logitech yokes. Connection is fairly straightforward. Main cable to the Xbox can accommodate Xbox One, Series X and Series S. From the yoke to the hub and your selected peripherals attach directly to the hub. When using the hub, make sure you switch to Xbox mode. The Honeycomb products, in my opinion, are competitively priced. These are the list prices in US dollars. Like most things, it does pay to shop around and look for deals. For example, I'm based in the UK and you can pick up the Alpha Flight Controls XPC from Argus for £260. My particular unit was imported and I had to pay duty of around £70. In Europe, it's available through their official distributors, Aerosoft, and last time I looked was priced at around €310. Euros. For PC users only, you might be able to get a deal on the original Alpha Flight controls, which is still currently for sale until stocks are exhausted. I believe, but stand to be corrected, the XPC will replace the initial Alpha Flight controls edition. Time to get down to the more important stuff. The unit is made out of a hardened plastic, but it has a rubberized feel to it. It is honestly very well made, I've had the original Alpha Flight controls 
since about September-October 2019 and it's still as good as new. These units are built to last. On the left hand side it has multiple button and switches including two rocker switches which auto center, an 8 position hat switch, an additional button and on the side of the yoke's handle a perfectly placed push to talk button. On the right hand side you've got another two rocker switches these are horizontal and a further two switches, one white, one red, exactly the same as the original unit. You've got a five position magneto switch on the right hand side of the main housing, as well as some Xbox controls. The main change here and a welcome addition is the start position is now spring loaded and automatically returns to the both magnetos position, as is the case in most real aircraft. I'm currently connected to my Xbox and you can see the light is on to show I'm in the correct mode. On the left hand side as per the original we have 9 switches. The 5 along the bottom control the lights in default config but when comparing them to the original Alpha Flight Control these have been beefed up a little bit. Up top is battery switch, alternator and 2 avionic switches. There's a satisfying click when you move the switches. The movement is very nicely defined. The front fascia is lit with the red LED lights and using the button we looked at earlier on the back panel you can turn them off or vary them to suit your preference. I prefer them on but just on the first setting, not too bright. And now on to the main event and let's test out both the roll and elevator access. The elevator or pitch movement is relatively small, I would have preferred something a little bit longer but a very nice firm feel to it which I prefer. When moving the roll or ailerons there's tension feedback there as the axis is spring loaded. What I do like is there's no center detent as you tend to find on the more budget options. The shaft itself is steel and is a bit noisy when moved in and out but once the engines are running well you just won't notice it. Here's our cable connecting the yoke to the main unit and as mentioned previously this is required to activate all the buttons and switches on the yoke itself. The overall size and shape matches the other units and along the top of the unit there are a number of fixing points where you could attach other peripherals such as the SATEC multi-panels and so on. Jumping now in SIM and to the control options menu. No drivers or downloads are required for the Alpha Flight Controls XPC. Support is built into Microsoft Flight Simulator. The sim has recognized it and it comes with one default profile. You can of course make others yourself. I'm currently looking at it on the Xbox but the experience is exactly the same on the PC. The only difference being here is that I have the Bravo Throttle Quadrant connected via the hub. All the axes are shown and of course sensitivity can be adjusted to suit individual preferences. I've already done multiple configs for both Alpha and Bravo Throttle Quadrant for the PC. And now that I have the XPC in hand, I'll be looking to do some configurations for the Xbox to suit various aircraft. For more details on the default configuration for the yoke, visit the Honeycomb Aeronautical site, link below, navigate to the XPC product page and select Flight Guide PDF. This covers both PC and Xbox, but just the yoke obviously, and details not only the default setup, but also suggested other configurations that you may want to adopt, especially applicable if you have something like the Bravo Throttle Quadrant as well. The proof of the pudding's in the eating as they say. Once again in the Xbox, let's see how the aircraft reacts. And those Hall Effect sensors at four times the resolution of the original Alpha are clearly evident. Small movement of the yoke physically produces a response in SIM, exactly as we expected. By adjusting sensitivities we can get movement to be on a one-to-one -one basis. The default configuration is a twin engine prop. I'm flying a single engine aircraft today, but for now I can use the same profile by just selecting the appropriate axis on my Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Going to be interesting to see how this operates with the Charlie rudder pedals. Batteries on, alternator and avionics, some lights and fuel pump and now to start the engines. And the switch clicks back to both. Perfect. Today we're in the Piper Arrow 3 from Caronado. An excellent rendition of this lovely aircraft. 
and one I've had the pleasure of flying in the real world. Look how responsive this yoke is. Tiny inputs are creating a reaction directly in the sim. Again, we can adjust this with sensitivity, but if you fly a real aircraft, small movements of the yoke create an appropriate response from the aircraft. The movement and feel of the yoke is super smooth, and in my personal opinion, while I think this is the best yoke currently available on the market for the Xbox, and has been the mainstay of PC users for quite some time. A massive advantage of course for Xbox users is you've now got access to something like the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Six axes, suitable for GA, commercial, multi-prop and so on. So for Xbox aviators, well you can go pro. Anikome Aeronautical were kind enough to provide a sample for this review, and I thank them for that, but I would like to highlight that all opinions and views given in this review are purely my own. I was not in any way obliged to even do a review, but just have a look back on my channel and you'll see there's a whole lot of different honeycomb products covered. That's not by accident, it's simply because I think the products are excellent in terms of value for money. In my personal opinion, the honeycomb yoke offers best bang for your buck. Yes, there are better yokes out there, but they cost considerably more. With the closest competitor, as far as I'm concerned, is probably the UK manufactured Fulcrum yoke. That's also a superstar. But turning back to the honeycomb Alpha yoke, I'm really pleased to see it not only continuing support for the PC, but adding Xbox compatibility to its armory. And it's another welcome step to opening up the full flight sim experience for Xbox users without compromise to PC pilots. I've no hesitation in giving this product a 5 star recommendation. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.